Jake, it's always the people who get bored of where they are and they want more that end up getting it, right? Of course. In my last video, I talked about never having a plan B because if you have a plan B, you don't really believe in your plan A. I 100% agree to that. And the cool thing about how I started social media was because that was like the only thing that I really wanted at that time. I was just like, I have to go for it. And that's what kind of happened. And the same thing kind of happened with our guests. So welcome to Share Your Scare, where we talk to real people and hear real stories. Today we have on the lovely Miss Brittany Ferlin. Hey, thanks for having hey. me, guys. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. I love yeah. that you have a scare podcast. Hey, we try here. And, and you're still going as Brittany Ferlin. Now you're married i am i mean i do britney furlan lee it just depends but yeah i mean i just left it at britney furlan because it's just like a whole lot of court paperwork right. to like yeah, change I the whole it. thing yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and i'm like oh so and we have to get in touch with someone on instagram to change oh, i just was like you know it's fine whatever <laughs> i'm so over it with you know you, your husband being a rock star like, yeah d he p wants to travel the world like how does he deal you know, with you not wanting to do that because of your health and stuff like is he pretty cool with it or? i mean i go mm-hmm so you just force yourself to go? I force myself moments. to go and I have panic attacks and it's horrible. And my husband is very kind, but he doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, this guy's like, you know, he shot heroin and fucking Jack Daniels <laughs> and he's not afraid of anything. Yeah. You know, he's not afraid of dying. He doesn't think about it. Yeah. He's not like, he's not obsessive. You know what I mean? And he doesn't overthink things. He's very like what you see, what you get is what you get. And you know, he's done copious amounts of drugs and lived this crazy life. And so for him, he's actually like more comfortable traveling than he is staying home. Like he's so bored right now, you right. know what I mean? So for him, it's like really weird. Like when I'm panicking and he's like, what are you panicking about? And I'm like, I don't know, we're like in a foreign country and like I'm having a panic attack right now. And like, you know, we'll be in Mexico. And I'm like, what? A, I don't wanna go to the hospital here. Like, I don't know yeah. if they don't even, probably don't speak English here. Like I'm freaking out. Like what if I die in this villa in Mexico? And he's like, why would you die? And I'm like, cause my heart rate's so high, look how high it is. And like my blood pressure will go up. and he's just like, oh, I don't get it. Like, yeah, dude, yeah. just chill. And he's yeah. very like, you know, and I'm just like freaking out for no, for no reason usually. But it's yeah. like, it all has to do with feeling safe. And yeah. if I don't feel safe, it's like, that's it, you know? Yeah. But we deal, you know, I force myself to go. I have all these things now that can help me, you know? So right. I, I haven't gone on a trip in a really long time, obviously, because of the pandemic, right. which I've loved. <laughs> That's the part of it I've loved. Right. I'm like, yay, no trips. Exactly. <laughs> I'm stuck at home. Yeah, um, but. yeah, but I mean, now that I have all these tools and I'm, you know, in therapy three times a week and I have all these supplements and things now, I know I'm like able to handle it. Mm -hmm. And it's like you go through panic attacks so many times that like you know what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Like even though sometimes they'll change their – their style, like one time it'll be a panic attack and you get really bad chest pain. And another time you'll have a panic attack where you're really lightheaded. And so sometimes you're like, well, this is different than last time, but it's all panic. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I'm just having, I have them so much that I've gotten almost used to them. Are you yeah. afraid that, like, you know, they're saying in the news that it's COVID, it's like, it's decreasing, you know, it's mm -hmm. getting better. They're starting to open up. Do you fear, like, once it's done, it's gone, that you're going to be kind of stuck in this, I want to only be home phase? Or do you think you'll be able to, like, get out of that phase. I'm trying, see, that's why I'm here today is because I was like, you know, you. I have to start getting cozy leaving my house. Mm -hmm. And so even during the day, I will get myself out of the house, whether it's like gra driving to the, you know, gas station by myself, or even if I don't need anything at Target, I'll go and force myself to walk around no matter how dizzy I get with the lights or how uncomfortable or nervous I am. I will force myself because all exposure therapy. And then once I get in my car, I'm like, okay, see, so you did it. You were fine. You didn't pass out. All those what if scenarios are poo poo caca like you're mm -hmm. not gonna fucking die i feel like my it's all around death because i just don't like not knowing yeah you know what i mean i don't like like what happens and is it painful yeah. and you know like i hate that i hate the unknown and excuse me if this comes off as ignorant because i don't know not too much all. on the subject but does meditation and stuff like that help like staying present in the moment yes. and not worrying so much about the future that's the most important thing is like Every morning when I wake up, they say, you know, one of the bigger triggers for people with anxiety is a lot of people grab their phone, they're on social media, uh -huh. right as soon as they wake up, check their fucking Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. So one of my first things that I do now in the morning that I have to do and before bed, at night I read mm -hmm. and in the morning when I wake up, I put on a 10 minute meditation and I lay there and I listen to it. And you can do this on YouTube. You can go on YouTube or if you have an app like Headspace or something, you can choose a meditation or the Calm app. 
and you do your 10 minute meditation in the morning before you do anything else, okay? You know, I don't care if you have to get up early, set an alarm 10 minutes ahead of time, yeah. just lay there and be present. And so, yeah, I do do that because you're right. Anxiety is living in either the past or the future, mm -hmm. not now. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest thing about it is to just go, no, 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 we're here mm -hmm. in this moment, you know? So that's is really good meditation, absolutely. Do you think if, for example, like if a monk or yeah. something had anxiety, do you think since they are so present all the time that their anxiety wouldn't affect them at all? So I, I, I read recently that if you commit to meditating for 15 minutes a day for 15 days, your life will change. And so I've been doing 10 minutes in the morning and like, you know, some days I'm like, F I f up and I yeah. forget or whatever. But, you know, they, they said 15 minutes every morning or every whatever, maybe do it before bed, 15 minutes a day for 15 days and you'll see a big change in your life. Because when you're meditating and it's okay, like no one's perfect at meditating, mm -hmm. like your thoughts will wander and you will start thinking about other things sometimes. And that's just part of learning how to meditate. Right. And I did that in the beginning. Like when you would first start meditating, you know, you're thinking, oh, I gotta go to the grocery store. I gotta, mm -hmm. okay, when's this done? I gotta check my likes. I gotta, you know what I mean? Like exactly. you start thinking about, dumb stuff. yeah, you're just yeah. like, I gotta upload that podcast. Exactly. Like, you know, so that's normal in the beginning, but eventually once you do it enough, your thoughts will kind of just go away. Right. And, it, and it helps to have a mantra. Sometimes my mantra will just be something like plastic. Like I'll just, uh, so every time my thoughts start going a wire and start, start thinking mm -hmm. about stuff I shouldn't be, I just go plastic, 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 and just keep repeating oh. that word in my head mm -hmm. so I can't think of anything else. And eventually, you know, you, you those thoughts all melt away. Wow. All those other thoughts. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I, I, even if you don't have anxiety, if you just want to be more present and in touch with your soul mm -hmm. and who you are as a person, I highly suggest meditation. Yeah, I, I've been practicing meditation for a while. That's so I, great. I agree with See, it. That's um, great. I love it. That's why I was just wondering. Like, Do you if, do every day? I do it every day except for today yeah. because I decided to go to Home Goods today. <laughs> and I wanted to wake up early and go before everyone else so I can get the good stuff. Yeah, I love, but I love Home Goods. I love Home Goods. So good. They have good furniture yes. and decor items. I recently just bought a house. So I'm, Congratulations. I've been, thank you. So I've been like just buying stuff every That's single great. day. Different Home Goods. I go to like the ones in Encino. I love the it. The one in I, Calabasas is great. Is there one in Calabasas? Yeah. There's, there's one, in, one like... I know there's one in Woodland Hills. Venture, yeah, Woodland Hills. Oh yeah, that yeah, one's yeah, good. Yeah, that that one's really good. good. I find the best one is in Glendale though. Glendale. Yeah. Wow. I know like the rugs and stuff. You're like, this should be like thousands yeah. of dollars. We just turn into a Home Goods podcast. Right. Anyway, guys, and what we bought at Home Goods this week. I'm exactly. I, I love people it. would listen to it. Um, but look, before you were into like social media stuff, you were an actress, right? Yeah. And did, had, have you ever like wanted to go back full force? Because she was in the dirt. For a second, yeah. Because <laughs> they thought it'd be that. funny oh, to put you me watch in. It. I didn't watch it. Um, so, like, the, the dirt's about Motley Crue, yes. my husband's band, like, that. their whole life. And so Jeff Tremaine, who's, like, the director of Jackass and all that stuff, uh -huh. he directed the dirt, and he did a great job. And he was, like, he thought it'd be really funny to just have me be in the, like, beginning with oh, Mick Mars so and just funny. ask him a question in the movie. And just because it's, like, I'm Tommy's wife. Yeah, so it's yeah. a kind of funny little, little uh, Easter egg. Um, but yeah, no, I was, so like I moved out here when I was 17 mm -hmm. to act and like I did theater in Pennsylvania. You can only go so far, obviously there. So I did stand up and I would go to the comedy store and the improv and I was friends with like all the big stand ups when they were starting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Gerard Carmichael used to like walk my dogs and like <laughs> we were friends. Like when I had to work, you know, he'd be like, I'll walk them for you. Yeah. You know, like yeah. um, I knew Chris D'Elia when he was starting. I knew um, just everyone big who's big now. I was like friends with when they were all starting and I started dating a stand up and he was like, well, we can't both do stand up because like I would often do better than him. Um, and then he got like shitty about it and was like, well, you're throwing me off. And so like we either have to break up or you have to stop doing stand up. And I was so pathetic and people pleaser like that. I was like, oh, yeah, fuck it. I'll never do stand up again. Like, please oh, don't leave no. me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Abandonment issues. <laughs> um, so I was like, yeah, please just don't leave me. Whatever. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. So then I started doing improv. I started becoming friends with people who made YouTube sketches, started doing YouTube sketches and then, you know, doing little short films and stuff like that. And then. Uh, Vine came out in like two, what, 2013 or something yeah, like something that, right? Early. And so I actually was going through a really hard time when Vine came out because um, I had gotten off of all my medicine. Like I, I take Effexor for the anxiety and depression. I just take the lowest dose, 37.5 mm -hmm. is like the starting dose. It's definitely not enough, but I that's it, you know? Uh -huh. And I'd gotten off of that and I was trying to live my life with anxiety disorder without any medicine 
after having been on it since I was 16. Wow. And oh, so man. I was in my 20s now, mm-hmm. so that's like 20 years of whatever, um, or 15 years of being on a medication, and it really fucked my brain up, and I couldn't even walk straight. Like, I would lean when I walked. Like, I had to go to, like, the Balance Institute on La Cienega because, like, they thought, like, something was wrong with my brain and my balance. And I was there with, like, 70-year-olds. It was, like, me wow. and, like, Gertrude, who's, like, 105. <laughs> like, no, sh- she can't walk. She's 105. Like, me, I'm all fucking walking sideways like a fucking weird fish. Like, it was so weird. Like, it was, it was just so weird. But then as soon as... Vine started up, so I was in my house, right? And I saw an ad for Vine on Instagram. I just signed up on Instagram. I think like Kelly Oxford posted it. And so I got on Vine, I started making videos and then people just started following me. And then I got really big and I had like 150,000 followers to, in like a month. Uh-huh. And so like CAA, UTA, oh, ICA, wow. ICM, WME, all these agencies started emailing me. And I had this manager at the time who was like a, a failed commercial actress. Like she was like in a Toyota commercial. Like she'd done like a couple commercials, yeah. right? Um, and she was my manager, uh-huh. you know, because it was like a friend of a friend. She's yeah. like, I know the business. Let yeah. me manage you, right? So she was like, you got to go to these meetings. You have to meet with these people. And my anxiety, like I wasn't leaving the house. I was just making, like in the beginning of all my vines, I was just making my vines in my house. I looked crazy because I was like, wasn't medic. It was just a mess, right? So they're like, you're going to come in and meet us? And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, no anxiety medication. I was like, definitely don't want to leave the house. Um, so finally, I got back on my Effexor. And literally within two weeks, I was able to, like, leave the house, which is crazy. It's crazy. So I go with this this lady to the first meeting was at ICM. And then I had meetings set up like UTA, WME, uh-huh. CAA, right? So I go to ICM and the guy who brought me in was a junior agent at the time and he was telling me all about like what they would do for me and blah, 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 and like I should have my own show and da, 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 right? So then we leave and I'm in the parking, I'm in my parking garage in my car and they call and they're like, come up and sign with us right now. Like we want you. And I had other meetings scheduled for the rest of the week and my fucking dumbass manager was like, you should just do it. You should just go sign, screw the other meetings because who knows what they're gonna say. And I was like, okay, so I went up and signed with them and then I was stuck with them for like three years and like Mm -hmm. they didn't really do anything for me. And so I'm like, so I did like some short films which were great Uh and, but it was mostly through friends that I knew. And when you sign with an agent like that and you're at that stage, they get a percentage of everything. Oh yeah, and then so basically what it was was like I was just making, I started making a lot of money Uh because like brands were coming to me like Wendy's, Domino's, um, you know, Burger King, like every Benefit Cosmetics, Procter and Gamble, mm-hmm. they were offering me a hundred thousand wow. dollars per vine. Per and vine. Per vine. How many followers? Six second videos. Yeah. I had ten million on Vine. Wow. And so, wow. And, and, just, and my vines would get uh, like a billion loops. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. remember how they would replay? Mm-hmm. So for them, it was worth it because right. it was like so many eyes were seeing it, right? Yeah. So. Um, so I was making all this money, and thank God I saved it. Um, but yeah, they would take ten percent of wow. everything, yeah. and they weren't really doing anything. Nothing. I mean, like we, we got my friend was really good friends with like Seth Green, and so I met him, and then him and I tried to do like a pilot for a show for me, and TBS gave us like a a, a pilot deal, and then just ended up not going through because. Mm-hmm. They ended up changing presidents like mid oh, us yeah. doing the pilot and the new president didn't want to take any of the old president's projects in. So I've just been kind of like passed along. But like Got luckily it. I'm friends with like a lot of directors and producers from Vine because mm-hmm. they've seen my videos. Mm-hmm. Like you're so funny and they put me in shit. Yeah. So like I'm in this new series um, called Paradise City that's coming out um, that has like Bella Thorne nice. and like so yeah I still act but like I mean obviously like, during the pandemic like nothing's, nothing's happening really yeah. <laughs> at least for me nothing's been happening so what do you think about like you know <laughs> new things that popping up now and making people celebrities overnight like TikTok Can I mean they... I'm on TikTok I yeah we see you on TikTok. dude I fucking love it I'm so <laughs> lame I'm like TikTok I feel like it's just it hits different than Vine I for some reason it. yeah I feel like it's so relatable yeah like they're for you page is creepily relatable because they they send you videos depending on what you like or whatever you've even talked about i've I've talked about something with jake and i see it on my for you page i'm like what is going on it's like i heard you talking about quesadillas you're trying to make a crazy one on tiktok yeah Yeah, who the f*** is listening to me (laughs) wait don't you have a vine story yes okay i forgot to tell you this so you it was i feel like i remember like you 
were really little, right? Yeah. You were like a baby. Yeah, no, I was, I was yeah. like 17, probably oh, 18. Was I mean to you? Okay. No, 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 okay, no. <laughs> you, you, it was you, kind of Curtis, and uh, Logan were like the first big yeah. Viners to like. Like, I mean, I had I, when Vine ended, I had 1.7 million. Wow. But you guys were like the first big, big Viners to like ever like one of my posts. And I followed you guys, so like I saw it when you guys liked my posts. I love it. And that was just the memory that I had. <laughs> yeah. I always remember you guys. Were the I first feel like ones I remember like you because like I looked you up before I came. And I was like, I remember your face, yeah. but I remember you like a young little baby. Yeah, like he was fat. So I was just a fat little kid. I remember Logan. Yeah. When I first met Logan, he was probably 17. Because you guys are the same age, right? Yeah, Logan and I are the same age. And yeah. then I flashed him. He walked into <laughs> Curtis's apartment and I was like, what's up? Welcome to LA, bitch. And, no I, fla- and I flashed him and he was like, and he's he, like, was so, he was so innocent. He was like, "Oh my god!" Oh he like my, covered his eyes, and now look so at him. Funny. I'm dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just really funny how people have evolved and changed and it's grown. Crazy. And yeah. like, look at you guys all grown up and tatted <laughs> and like, f- it's no. like things it's change. So crazy, right? Yeah. I wanted to ask because I know that I mean, from my brother's case, there wasn't like a ton of money on Vine yeah. because it wasn't like you weren't getting paid like you are on TikTok. I made now. so much money on Vine. Though, yeah, so yeah, I can't yeah. Relate to but that. um. What well, you were saying the biggest. is, yes, yeah, you were the, you were the number made, one followed woman. I made hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. And what did you do with that money? Because I see all these Saved TikTok kids. Yeah, I see all these Instant TikTok kids buying, buying Lamborghinis. Lamborghinis and all these crazy things. So many people wasted their Vine money, mm-hmm. and it's like yeah. really sad. Like I'm not gonna name names, but I'm friends with a couple people where I looked at their bank account because they brag and they'd be mm-hmm. like, "Look, I got 1.7 million in the bank." And then two years later, they had to move back in with their parents because they rented houses that were $20,000 a month. They rented or leased cars that were, you know, Mm -hmm. $10,000 a month Mm -hmm. because they were so expensive. They bought clothes that were, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. And they just, and then they also, a big mistake that a lot of them made was that they signed with um, money money management Mm -hmm. companies that, you know, they charge you monthly to manage your bills. Mm -hmm. And I never did that. Me either, yeah. I, I yeah. was like, I'm managing, I can pay all my own bills, everything's on a draft, I'm exactly. not paying someone. I first of all, I don't make like Will Smith money, so yeah. I don't and I don't make my husband's money, so I yeah. don't need to pay someone to pay my fucking water bill. Right. I don't need to do that. You know, I didn't yeah. I never needed to do that. I had everything on a credit card that would go out every month right. autom- automatically out of my bank account. So I never needed someone to do that, but people were lazy and mm-hmm. so they'd sign with these money management firms and they would take five and ten thousand dollars from these people wow. a month to manage their money when they were paying bills, mm-hmm. you know, paying their fucking whatever. But it yeah. was so stupid. It yeah. was like, dude, you can do it yourself. Like, why don't you just not be lazy? So I watched all these people lose, like, literally cool. everything. I just saved all my money. Yeah. I lived really modestly. Like, I bought myself a nice car. And then I lived really modestly and I got like a little two bedroom. I rented a little two bedroom house in Larchmont and mm-hmm. I got a really good deal. It was like, 2500 bucks a month mm-hmm. when I was there and it was like nothing meanwhile my friends are renting mansions for like 10 yeah. Yeah. and I just was really careful and I've always been that way, you know, because yeah. you never know what's going to happen, never right? And yeah, and if you don't, like, transition. A lot of those Viners didn't transition to, like, YouTube and at stuff the time, right. yeah. at the time, you yeah. know? Yeah, and I didn't. And I didn't know how to, like, do that stuff. I mean, I tried. I was like, yeah, what's up, my YouTube channel? But I didn't know how to do shit, you know? <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's really sad, you know? But then it's like... Y- you know, I mean, I, I just wish the best for everybody, right, you know, course. but it is a lot of people are really like, you just got to be smart. You can't you s- assume that everyone has your best interest and heart, you know, because people see you making money and they're like, oh, I just want a piece of that. You yeah, know? I, I hear so many horror stories about like managers just like oh, yeah. signing them, doing nothing, taking their money or yeah. even just like stealing money. from yeah. them and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, That's why you can't give people access to your stuff. Yeah. Like I like learned that because. You know, my husband obviously has a money manager because he's, you know, makes so much money, but he's a really good one, a guy who's been in the business for years. But, like, you know, he's even said that he's had people who were taking, like, tens of thousands of dollars every month for, um, you know, they would take it because of extra time it took to write a letter or something. Like, they just dumb shit. Yeah. Like office mm-hmm. supplies, ten thousand dollars. Like what? Like what just weird. Exactly. <laughs> Gold paperweights. And it's like you know you just have to be careful. Yeah. I, say, I say just manage your own stuff as much as you can, unless you're making fucking Bill Gates money. Then mm-hmm. like just be as cautious as you can you know yeah for yeah. sure okay so now it's that time the podcast is called share your scare so Brittany let's hear your scare 
I grew up in Pennsylvania, uh-huh. so you guys know Pennsylvania cold. is <laughs> cold, <laughs> yeah. but also so much history in Pennsylvania. Definitely. I mean, like the Liberty Bell, mm-hmm. like there were so many, you know, it's kind of like the start of a, a lot of colonization in America. And so there's buildings there that were built you know, in like the early 1600s, like there's just so much history there. And so I grew up in like an outskirt part of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania called Upper Bucks County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my friends lived in like these big houses in the forest and they were like made from stone, like, like the back in the day, they made houses like fully out of stone. It was gnarly. It was really, really beautiful but really old and you know a lot of history in these homes and so i had this friend named chris and he would come to school all the time and he would tell us that his house is haunted and everyone was like yeah right like no one believes right. you you're we're full of shit. and he's like no he's like my house is really haunted um john fry used to live in my house and we were all like well who's john fry and so he explains to us that, and this is in your history books too, which is so crazy because we actually ended up learning about it in wow. history class. Wow. This guy named John Fry was, if you look it up, it's called Fry's Rebellion. Okay. So back in the day before there were taxes, the first tax that was implemented was the window tax. So mm-hmm. if you were putting windows in your house, you were going to get taxed on it. Okay. Wow. And obviously, who likes in taxes no one nobody <laughs> no one, yeah nobody and taxes didn't exist before this you know it was like taxing for import or whatever export but like now people are getting taxed on their personal items so the window tax was the first thing that they were going to tax people on and so john fry was like uh-uh. like i'm not paying taxes like why should i pay taxes i pay for the window why do i have to pay <laughs> right. extra money you know for yeah. this and it was like just starting of government and so the history is Fry's Rebellion and him and a group of guys got together in Pennsylvania and they were like, we're not paying taxes. You can come get us. We can fight us, mm-hmm. you know, because we're not going to pay taxes. And they're That's like, like their me own little, every t- year when every I have year. to pay. Same. I'm like, come, <laughs> come for me. Come fight me. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> so what ended up happening was the tax collector came to John Fry's house, which is my friend Chris's house. Oh, wow back in the day and he knocked on the door and you know told the guys there you need to pay your taxes mm-hmm. and they killed him oh, wow. and they buried him on the property oh no and so then a few days later the police come and they have this full on war at John Fry's property wow. with you know them shooting at each other and you know killing each other and so they kill John Fry they hang him oh man in his own barn and then they kill all the guys that were his followers and bury them on the property Wow. wow, so there's like a whole bunch This is of- like a whole thing like back in the day. so there's a bunch of dead people on this property, John Fry included, had been hung in his own barn, okay? And so my friend is a descendant of John Fry, so the house hasn't been out of the family for years, okay? So like they've had this house passed on, passed on, passed on. His grandmother lived there, his mother lived there, and he lived there. And they all are just okay with living with ghosts. Like the grandmother first told him when he was little because he said he would be playing out back and he would see a shadow of a man in walking back and forth, pacing back and forth in front of the the barn where they hung him. And he would go into his grandma because he's like the man was see through, right? You know, and he was, but he was a, like a black figure, and he just kept pacing back and forth in front of this barn. And he would went to his grandma and was like, "Who's that guy?" Man. And she goes, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's John Fry. He's the guy they killed and hung in the barn." And his grandmother went into the barn and she hung a crucifix. She nailed a crucifix into where they up on the top where they hung John Fry. She nailed it into the wood. And every single day, she would have to go into the barn and turn the crucifix back right side up because at nighttime, it would get turned upside down. No way. Wow. Yes. Every day, she had a little ladder. She would climb up there, turn the crucifix back right side wow. up. So 
And they were like totally fine with it. They were like, it was like a normal thing. So that wasn't even like the only thing that he did. Like they would be in the kitchen and cabinets would open, dishes would go flying out. Um, he would tap on windows. They have like these, like it's scary in Pennsylvania with the old houses because they have like these little tiny square windows and they're kind of creepy. And he would tap, 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 tap back and forth on the windows. Like there were no trees touching the windows and like he would like rattle them. Um, he would, it's crazy. Chris was on AIM one time and he was yelling at his mom and then all of a sudden on his AM it was like be nice to your mother be nice to your mother be nice to your mother, be nice to your mother, be nice to your mother. and just kept going wow. and then yeah and so like he would come to school and tell us these stories and we were all kind of like yeah dude nice, right? whatever you're fucking crazy my little curse yeah go okay. for it he, we'd be like yeah dude you fucking whatever what kind of drugs what is crack are you smoking yeah. like you're crazy like none of us really believed him right because yeah. it was like who believes that right I mean the, the history part we all looked up and it was true. So it was kind of like, well, maybe we kind of believe him. But yeah. then like, when we were kind of like, well, I don't know, right? So we're like, maybe we should see it for ourselves. So me and a group of my friends, uh, we were like, let's go over Chris's house one night and get a Ouija board and mm. unleash the demons. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Why people, not? Don't, people don't realize how Ouija boards can really... Oh, yeah your life up. Oh, yes. We yeah. have we've played a couple times and every time we say that's our last time. Cuz it's like it's scary. Yeah, and then did you go get like cleansed afterwards? Oh, yeah. We we will sage the whole thing, sage our house right yeah. after. It's scary. And like they say you can't just throw them away. You no. can't you have to, like bury them or something Stuff weird. can attach to you yeah. forever. That's why we don't play anymore. Like succubuses. I mean, they might be chilling with us right now on the pod, you know? <laughs> hey, hey, introduce yourself. <laughs> introduce yourself, succubus. What's your name? Um <laughs> scary. Lucifer. Yeah, he's a like, demon number 1. <laughs> right. Um so yeah, so then we go over Chris's house and it's super creepy because I'd actually never been to his house, but I've been to a lot of my friends' houses in Pennsylvania. You drive down, I'm just kind of setting the scene for you, you drive down like a scary dirt road mm -hmm. that's way too long that you're like, why is the road so long? And then there's just trees everywhere. And then as we're pulling up towards his house, back in the day, they had house markers. And so he had a little, there's a little tin sign from like back in the day day and it said Fry's house. So it was like still the original sign from when John mm -hmm. Fry lived there. And we pulled up and we saw that. We're like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so we pull up. The house is super creepy. I mean, just imagine old rickety ass, like, well, not rickety because it was made of stone, but like run down yeah. Pennsylvania house, um, kind of colonial looking. The barn was dilapidated, huge barn with a big like A-frame top. And it was just scary. And it was nighttime. Yeah. And so we go in the house and we meet his mom. And we're like, Chris comes into school and tells us about this John Fry ghost and all this stuff. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, he, they're here. They're just – and his mom was, like, so casual they're about it that she was just like, oh, yeah, no, he used to – I used to, like, you know, play with him when I was little. She's like, I would see him outside my window and ask, you know, the grandma all the time about him. And, you know, just – we just got used to him. He just is there. And she was like, yeah, he'll just – sometimes he'll move my keys or he'll throw dishes out of the cabinet or open, leave cabinets open or doors open or anything. She's like, he's like, he doesn't hurt anybody. And I was like, oh, shit. like you yeah. live with that? That's kind of weird. But, you know, it was like so calm and normal to her that was like you just believe her. It's like, like she's saying, yeah, we see a deer outside. Yeah, like, like she, yeah. to her it was just like, yeah, so like she's like, what? Who cares? Right. Like, he's just a oh, spirit. Man, that's scary. So, yeah, super weird. So we were like, all right. And we're like, OK, so let's go in the barn and get the Ouija board out and like see what we can do. And so we all go in the barn. We're like playing music. The lights are on. We get the Ouija board, we're all sitting in there, we're like kind of just like, you know, f***ing around, like asking who's here, you know, like <laughs> show us your dick. Like just being like totally immature, like the kids who totally get murdered in those movies, yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Just spear comes through my head, but um, so we're like, we're, we're asking it all these questions and nothing's happening. It's like an, an hour goes by and we're like, this is f***ing lame, we're not going to see anything because we don't live here, you know, whatever. And so my friend Bridget was like, this is lame. Like, let's let's just go home. Like, this is stupid, right? And as soon as she says that, we all feel like an ice. And it was like, it was actually summertime, so it wasn't even cold out. Ice cold air just filled the room. And we were all like, and then all the lights went out. Ooh. And we fucking ran out of the bar and we were like, what the f***? And like, and like fucking freaked out. And we were all standing there and then the lights went back on. 
And his mom came out and she's like, you guys, what the fuck are you doing? And we, and he was like, mom, we were just, we got the Ouija board and the fucking lights went out. And, he, and she's like, I told you to leave him alone. You're going to piss him off. Don't piss him off because he's going to start breaking shit. And we were like, oh my God, like this is weird, right? right like the yeah. mom's like, mom's like, knock it off. Why do you get a Ouija board for? Like, f that, you know? They're kind of white trash. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> so then my friend Bridget's like, no, f that. Like, I'm going to go back in there. And she starts walking towards the barn. And By right herself? as soon, yeah. Then right as soon as she takes a step towards the barn, all the lights go off again. And the mom was standing outside and she's like, ooh, you're pissing him off. You better fucking stop. And we were like, oh, my God. And so another thing about this property that's really weird is we're all standing outside and we look out into the woods and it's just like ominous, like mm -hmm. so much woods, like yeah. just woods, woods, woods. And so we see like a red light in the woods, like a little red dot. And we're because we're like just out there sh standing there. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And he goes, oh, it's like Native American like caves back there. But you never reach the red light. Like if you keep walking towards it, like it just keeps going. You never reach it. Like, it just what? keeps getting further away. And did you ever try following it? He did. Okay. We didn't. I was like, I'm not going to the woods. Like, <laughs> like, after talking, John Fry's all mad. Like, I'm not trying to. So I was freaked out. So then we all went inside, and we went into his room. And we were, like, talking about how weird it was. And he was like, yo, look, look, listen to how weird this is. Like, when I play my music too loud, he gets really mad. And so he starts playing, like, crazy rap music. It was probably, like, Eminem at the time. And he's just playing it all loud, and he's like, watch the windows, watch the windows. And so we're all sitting there all freaked out. He's playing his music all loud. And then all of a sudden, we hear the windows, and they start going, like someone's banging on each of the windows. And he turns the music off, and it's, and then it stops. And we were like, dude, what the f***? Like, it was the most, like... Probably like the most weird, surreal experience, especially just because his mom was so nonchalant yeah. about it. Like she was yeah. just like, Do we have to live with this. You know what I mean? Like right. they lived there because the house had been passed down to them through mm -hmm. years. And they didn't have to pay for it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So she was like, and don't make it harder for me and the ghost. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not moving out of this fucking house, you know? So... Um, so yeah, so that was that, and I left there, and it was very scary. That's terrifying. So like, you were literally like getting, like stuff happening oh, right yeah, after each other. Oh yeah, right at right in front of me, and oh, like it was God. just so weird, like to see that happen. And then like you're looking out the window, like what could that be? Wow. And the windows were like cemented in stone, so they weren't loose or anything. It was nothing to make them rattle like yeah. that. And it was like someone Something was hitting, was knocking up. on them, and there was no trees near them, nothing. Like the oh, trees were man. away from the house. It was weird. I mean, definitely, like, inexplainable, and my friends and I were very freaked out from that point on. Oh, I would be um, freaked out, too. Yeah, like, I kind of so want to go. Like, I I'm know. intrigued. Like, do, do you still friends with this guy? I mean, I haven't <laughs> talked to him in years, but, yeah, so in his barn, then I saw the crucifix and everything, too, like, the crucifix hanging in the barn, and, like, it was nailed in. There was a little ladder that they'd have to go turn it back upright. Like, so many weird things. You know, that's so crazy, because there's probably people that are listening to this podcast right now that have a, ha a haunted house oh, or yeah. something, and they have to just live with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people like because it's like they couldn't afford to move, really? so they were just like, oh yeah, like fuck it, like we the spirit it's part of the here. Family. Yeah, it's like it's whatever, you know. Wow. And his mom like seemed to think that spirits like weren't like necessarily conscious; that they were more just like energy that was just repeating itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. sometimes when you go through something so traumatic, and who knows? I mean. She seemed to think that sometimes because he had gone through something so traumatic, his energy just was repeating a pattern, yeah. like yeah. walking in front of the barn, that kind of thing. But, I mean, the stuff about, like, the be nice to your mother and the dishes flying off the shelves and that kind of stuff, I mean, that's pretty scary. Yeah, it doesn't sound like stagnant energy or anything No, like it sounds like conscious energy. Exactly. Something Definitely. knows what they're doing Do there. you guys think that when we die, we still have consciousness? I for sure think there's a whole other plane that we can't see mm -hmm. because it just it wouldn't make sense any other way to me. I yeah. mean, the only other thing that makes sense is like reincarnation to me. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, there is another uh, plane of existence right here with us that we're not seeing. Uh, someone I was watching a YouTube video made a really crazy analogy that it was like, we're all on different, like, you know, we're on frequencies, like a radio yeah. system is a frequency. You go on a different ra a frequency, you can't hear whatever was on the last station. Yeah. So if you think about us on Earth right now, what if we are on a certain frequency and if we would have just twerk the frequency, not twerk, twerk? it. Like, <laughs> we tweak the frequency. We twerk the right way. Right? No, there's a whole other probably yeah. world that's happening on top of our world world 
right now and just a different frequency. I 100% believe that. Yeah, that's crazy. To and me. that's the thing. I mean, because like, what is it? Like, is it Newton's law? I'm going to fuck this up. It's like energy cannot be destroyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't destroy it. Exactly. We're made of energy. Mm -hmm. So, like, our physical body dies, but what about all that energy? Yeah, it can't be created, Where does destroyed. it go? Where okay. does it go? Like, it has to go somewhere, right? I mean, my dog, my little Yorkie, Wiki, recently passed away. Oh, like, two months ago. It's okay. He was 16. Um, and, it, and this happened with my other dog too, which is really weird is, um, you know, I, so he passed away and he, he died of old age. I had mm -hmm. to, I had to end up euthanizing him cause he had, um, he had a kidney failure and heart failure at the same time. And it was just like a nightmare and poor thing. He was suffering. And so the first night that he was gone, I had a dream and it, I was in a room just playing with him. And I was like, oh, my God, I thought you were gone. And he was like, no, I'm right here. And anytime you like, I mean, he didn't talk, yeah. but like, you know, he was like, <laughs> it was just like he was kind of like communicating with me like I'm here. Anytime mm -hmm. you want to play with me, come to this room. Like it was like, oh, my God, I was so happy. And then I woke up and I was so sad. And then the next night, I just kept dreaming of him like night after night after night. And I would play with him in my dreams. And I was like, oh, like I'm, he's still here. And. Um, and the next night I was in bed and I was sleeping and he used to run across our carpet and jump up on this pillow to get onto the bed. And so I'm asleep and I'm a really light sleeper. Like anything will wake me up. Mm -hmm. It's like PTSD. Sh like I'm just like, ah, bombs, you know, <laughs> like weird. Anyway, so I hear the, the feet running across the carpet, jumping on the pillow to come on the bed. And I woke up and I was like, Nina, cause I have another dog. Uh-huh. And I was like, Nina. And then she comes out from under the covers. Oh. And so I was like, Wiki. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, Wiki. Like, I, it was so, like, That's clear spooky. as day, woke me out of my sleep. Him, the feet across the carpet, jumping on the pillow, waking me up. And my dog was in bed with, my other dog wow. was in bed with me. And this happened with my other dog. I had another dog, Meg. Um, who was on all my vines? She like had the black. She was a black wiener, black haired wiener dog, and she died really tragically. She got um, hit by a car oh. at, a do uh, at a dog park, which sucked. Uh, it was the worst day of my whole life. Wow. Um, and I was so distraught. And and she used to do this thing where I was in, I would be in the shower, and she would scratch the rug outside the shower and ro rub on it, like uh -huh. while I was in the shower. And I was in the shower like the second day after she died, and I heard. The oh. scratching, and I was like, "Am I fucking going crazy?" Like, I actually stopped myself in the shower because I was hearing it, and was like, "Am I hearing this, or am I fucking mentally ill?" Mm -hmm. I mean, I am mentally ill, but like, you know, am I actually <laughs> hearing this or not? So I stopped myself and I listened, and I was hearing it, and I fucking ripped the cur the curtain over the shower curtain, and there was nothing. But I was like, "Oh my god, what the fuck was that?" Right? Yeah. Then, like a week later, I'm in bed and I'm I'm trying to sleep and. I hear a dog lapping water and I figure, oh, it's Wiki because I had another dog. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh, it's like Wiki's drinking water. And then I roll over and Wiki's next to me oh in bed. That's so crazy. I've had both of my dogs like come visit me. The one thing I have heard though is that like dogs do go to heaven or, yeah. or go or become the same energy that us humans are. So, I mean, that's very possible. Like, yeah. I, you've never heard of, like, a cow, you know, becoming a ghost. <laughs> you never hear cow moose, you mean a ghost moose, but, like, I hear stories about people with their dogs hearing things like that, and it's actually crazy. I had a dog recently pass away, not recently, maybe, like, a year ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my other little dog, who's, like, who lives with me, his name's Kobe, he'll run back and forth, like, looking up, like, almost like he's looking in heaven running mm -hmm. with another dog. Really? It's really crazy. Does he do it still? Yes. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's only at our mom's house, though, Only right? at my mom's house. Where so... the other dog was. Where he lived. And my dog at my house does not run around, nothing like that. He's just, so it's almost like he's playing with his, his ghost buddy. So I it's, hope so. It's very cute, but it's crazy. It is crazy, right? And then I feel so bad because I do feel like, I mean, I think my dog has passed on at this point. I, like, lit a white candle for him and, like, you know, prayed mm -hmm. that he would pass on. But I do have like a feeling that he's still there sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when I'm petting my other dog, I feel like he's like right next to her wow. and I'm like, oh, is he there? Like, you know, it's hard, it's Something hard. There. It's so weird to yeah. tell you. I, start, I do, like a psycho, <laughs> my husband walks in and he's like, all right, well, <laughs> glad I married this psychopath. Um, but yeah, so it's it's been, it's really interesting. I've had so many weird experiences and then like the only last unexplainable experience I've had was um, growing up in Pennsylvania. My house was relatively new. So I was, I grew up in a house that was like, a, a, you know, a new construction. And 
but w- my house had really heavy, dark energy. Mm. And I don't know if it was because, like, my parents had, like, m- the most tumultuous relationship or what. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that kind of energy can bring in dark sh- you know, especially yeah. when there's a lot of fighting and a lot of um, anger and a lot of crazy shit going on. Um, sort of crazy childhood. Um, <laughs> to just keep it short. Um, but yeah, so I remember always feeling very scared in that house. Like I slept with my light on till I was like 15. Wow. Like I'm talking about full lights, like in here. Yeah. Sleeping. You weren't taking any. I was like, I gotta see everything. Like, I'm like, no motherfuckers pulling one up on me. Like, I would turn the like, my dad would come in, try to turn the light off. I'd be like, hell no! Like, turn that shit back on, you know? And I'd leave like all the lights. And my dad was like, the electricity was like, fuck the electricity bill. Do you want me to die? Like, it was so scary, (laughs) so traumatizing. So I would sleep with my lights full blast, (laughs) like podcast studio lights. (laughs) Um, and so I was always just really uncomfortable in that house and just always had weird feelings. And I was by myself a lot because my parents ended up getting divorced when I was like six and my dad worked all day and my brother was out doing drugs. Um, so I was home alone with the dog a lot. And so I remember when I was like, I was probably like in my teens and my dad's room had like a little hallway that adjoined to the bathroom. And there was a door that separated the, the hallway and the bathroom. And there was a mirror on the back of the door and the door was like the door was la- like you know those little spring thingies that are on the back of the door and you push it in a thing and it stays yeah. you know yeah, like yeah, I mean, yeah. the door was like in a thing like okay. it, it, you'd have to unhinge it to to shut it yeah. right so I'm just sitting there ironing my jeans because I'm OCD and I was like I ironed my jeans like a, <laughs> like a Seinfeld character like I, I can't have any wrinkles so I'm like ironing my jeans for school and I remember looking into the bathroom and thinking, I wish the door was shut so I could see like my outfit once I put it on, right? And I'm ironing my jeans and all of a sudden the door just slams oh, shut. Like slams. And I was like, <gasps> like scares me, right? And then what does your brain do as soon as something like that happens? You start going to the, mm-hmm. all the logical shit. Yeah, like, okay, right. so like there's wind, there, there's someone else shut it, yeah, like yeah, yeah. someone pulled it shut, like I just didn't see them, like, you know, there's a window open somewhere, like I, I start going through my head and going, okay, so like, uh, 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 cause I knew that door couldn't be shut unless you like pulled it off yeah. the hinge. So I go in my dad's room and I'm like looking, no windows are open. I go in the bathroom, no windows are open and I'm like, my house is new, it's not like it's on shaky foundation that my, ha- my door, you know, would sh- just you know, tilt shut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I call my dad and I'm like, dude, the door just slammed shut in front of my face. And he was like, oh, was there a window open? I'm like, no, it's not a fucking window open, dad. And he's like, well, maybe it's the foundation. I'm like, dad, the house is like the most sturdy, like never had a foundation problem. He starts making up excuses, but like I know in my heart of hearts, like that was some fucking supernatural shit. Like I will never forget oh, that because it was so weird and yeah. like, i don't know if i did it because i yeah, was like, just casually thinking like i wish the door would shut the fear of it manifested it, right yeah. like yeah. i was like i was like man, casually thinking i wish the door would shut and then it shut like two seconds later slammed slammed shut not like a like, you know you did have superpowers and you really didn't know like try moving your gatorade bottle right now with your mind. dead i can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? i'm like no <laughs> i'm like i could never it starts like doing that <laughs> it's just like floating <laughs> dude i've tried that shit before and now it doesn't work um but yeah it's just really weird it was really weird that was one of the other weirder experiences but those are most of my that's that's insane it sounds like like the scary shit kind of just follows you in a way i feel like I'm very sensitive to energy. Uh-huh. Like I'm sensitive to people's energy. I'm sensitive to animals and I'm sensitive to all energy. Like I can feel it and I take it on. Like if someone's not feeling well or if someone's like depressed or if someone's going through something, like I feel mm. it physically. I can feel their like angst, you mm-hmm. know? So it's like, it's really hard for me in relationships, especially like when you're with someone all the time and like, you know, they're not having a good day. I feel all that energy. Like, I'm like, oof. Like, it just, I can tell, you know? And it's like, are you not having a good day? And they're like, yeah, I'm not having a good day. I'm like, yeah, I can feel that shit. Like, it's su- wow. it sucks. Like so, it's- so there's no hiding anything from you? No. I, <laughs> I notice 
everything. Like I notice like a judgmental look. I notice like a, I notice everything. I notice I'm too hyper aware, uh -huh. you know? So, it's like, so you're sensitive to energy and stuff, but like what about like when it comes to like, uh, you know, like social media, for example, yeah. like are you sensitive to, you know, people saying like rude things about you or anything like that? Or is it just like you can just sense when people are feeling a certain way? Like or when you walk into a room, can you know when people don't like you? Yeah, of course, right away. And has um, that happened on social media? Because, you know, in social media, I feel like everyone's fake. You know, oh, most yeah. Of them. I mean, I try to be as real as possible because everyone on there's so fake uh -huh. um but yeah like so so i've just gotten to this point where i think about life so much and i think about you know our time here being so impermanent and i kind of think like the best thing i can do for myself right now is to be my truest self and so i've kind of changed my social media in a way whereas like when i was on vine i was kind of just like ignorant Mm -hmm. kid and now I'm more like honest about my feelings and like I share my struggles with anxiety I have like a horrible anxiety disorder obviously from being too sensitive about feeling everything it's just an overload of mm -hmm. you know like being an empath I'm an empath so mm -hmm. I can just kind of feel everything and it's just a lot um and taking on other people's stuff so I'm very honest about it now on social media and so for me it's like I've gotten to this point where it's like I get one life and I can either be you know, fake and act like, you know, I'm never going to die and that like, you know, be into all the dumb fake shit and or I can be really true to myself and like be honest about like my struggles and be honest about like who I am as a person. So I kind of just do, you know, me, mm -hmm. you know, as truly as I can. I know sometimes it's really depressing, you yeah. know, because sometimes people just want to see the highlights on right. social media you yeah, know they exactly. don't always go on there to hear you talk about heavy stuff but i'm like you know whatever's that's my social media so it's like whatever's how i'm feeling that day yeah yeah i try to be honest about and it and how are you dealing with like anxiety during this pandemic like has that took a hit on you or? oh my god so it's actually so crazy because um i give myself like mad props for even driving here today because i have like my anxiety is sort of turning into agoraphobia, especially with the pandemic, because... Can you define what agoraphobia is? Agoraphobia is when you have a fear of leaving your house. Ooh. So because of the pandemic and like being in my house so much, little things like going to the grocery store and stuff have been really triggering for me because the house has now become like my safe space. Right. Yeah. You know Sanctuary. what I mean? And, and you know, on top of my anxiety, I have like health anxiety where I always think I'm sick, mm -hmm. always think I'm dying. And then with COVID, it's mm -hmm. like every little scratch in my throat or whatever, I go get a test, you know, like it's, it's really shitty. My anxiety is kind of like, it's all around. It's in all aspects. And so, um, yeah, the pandemic has been gnarly as it has been for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I just got so used to being in my house and my safe haven that like, you know, once things started not loosening up, but like, you know, once I started going, okay, I gotta go to the grocery store. I can't just keep ordering groceries. I should go to the grocery store. I gotta get out of the house or I'm gonna start becoming, I knew I was becoming agoraphobic mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. You know, um, my husband would be like, can you go do this or do that? And I'd be like, no, like I didn't even want to go to the gas station, put gas in my car. My, I would start sweating really? and getting like heart palpitations. Like I literally have my purse is full of like CBD. Um, I have this natural herb called Crotagus oxycantha that slows your heart rate down because my heart rate will go up to like 160 oh, wow. just sitting here because I'm so anxious and I have like fear, like fight yeah. or flight, you mm -hmm. know, like whereas back in the day, um, someone would be chased by like a bear, you'd be like full of adrenaline, ready to run, right? right. Your heart rate goes up, your fight or flight is what they call it. Mm -hmm. But for me, that bear is now just leaving the house. So I get very anxious, I start sweating, my heart starts racing, I get dizzy. So I started, the only way to get through it is exposure therapy. And so what I have to do is just do it, right. yeah. you know, and if it sucks which it does a lot of the time and I'm anxious and I'm sweating and I'm having heart palpitations I just have to keep going mm -hmm. because I have to get through it because if I let it win then I'm never gonna leave my house yeah. you know right. so like today today is probably the first time I have left my house and gone by myself to Beverly Hills from Calabasas. Wow. You know, it's like a long drive and like, you know, being with people I don't know. <laughs> now I know you, but you know, it's all tri it's all very triggering for me yeah. and and in the car on the way here, you know, you start having all the symptoms. My hands get sweaty. I start like getting my heart starts beating really fast. My face gets flushed and I'm like, "Oh, I don't feel good." 
I should call and cancel. I should turn around. Yeah. But it's like my anxiety. Yeah. And then like as soon as I'm here and I'm in it, I'm fine. You know, like for the most part, I'm yeah. like cozy. I can manage it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's been horrible. It's been horrible for so many people. You know, yeah. I mean, I I get emails and messages every day of people that are like, thanks for sharing because I felt like I was going crazy or I felt like I was alone in this. Mm -hmm. Do you guys get anxiety at all? Not really. I get anxiety more about like things that I need to get done. Okay. Like, and so, and I never get them done, you know? So like all day I'm thinking about like, oh, I got to do all this stuff. But once I like start doing it, it like goes away. But I'm not like, don't have anxiety like you. I get anxiety when it comes to confrontation. Like, okay. When I have to like, for example, re go return something at a store that like, I <laughs> know I, I switch something to like, you know what I mean? Like something <laughs> of mine that was up on it and I switched like for example uh, I was so shady I know, but like I bought you this, have anxiety I bought, I bought this thing like two weeks ago at home goods it was a pump you know like for the, the dish soap right and like all the paint started coming oh, off the yeah, top part lame, of the thing yeah. so I bought a new one and yeah, I was gonna switch, switch it, it out, out yeah. go return it but like I, I have the most anxiety that they're gonna start questioning about it oh my god and I start freaking out so I ended up just having my mom do it cause like, <laughs> I was like here mom you return this You're one so lucky and that's the thing isn't it funny like it's like if someone's with me, I'm usually okay. But like, my husband loves to travel, mm -hmm. and so he'll be like, "Let's go to Bali and like stay in a fucking hut," or like, "Let's." And my health anxiety is like, "Boop," because like when I have panic attacks, my heart rate does go up so high that mm -hmm. it gets dangerous. Yeah. And so I always like to be near like a hospital, just in mm -hmm. case. I try not to go. You know what I mean? Obviously now I haven't been because of right. Corona, but pretty much like you kind of do these like what if scenarios. Exactly. Yeah. So that's like the biggest no no with anxiety and like people with anxiety and like they teach you in therapy is to stop what ifing. You know what I mean? Because that's the biggest thing that gets me worked up is like I'm leaving my house and like I told you what if my thoughts okay so my anxiety would be like what if uh, I'm in traffic on the way to this podcast and I get stuck and it's bumper to bumper and I start having a panic attack and then I'm stuck and no one's gonna be able to help me you know what I mean mm -hmm. and like I can't park my car and like get out because then people will be like beeping at me and so I get panicked, like, what if that happens? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, what if I'm at the... So one of my other triggers is, like, really bright um, fluorescent lighting in, like, Target and, like, grocery stores. Like, when I'm in there, I, like, the lights just kind of make me really dizzy. Wow. And then I'm like, what if I pass out? And I'm by myself. Yeah, then, I like, feel like someone... that's kind of similar to me. Like, I, I, I'm self-diagnosed a hypochondriac. Same, yeah. Like, I will get a headache, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, WebMD, yeah. Yeah, like, and then it makes it tumor. a thousand times yeah. worse until I go and get, like, it checked out. And they it's, like, say, like, nothing. not to do that, Yeah, you know? And I, ch I self-check constantly. Guys, I have a f***ing... Pharmacy. <laughs> that I have here. So I have the oximeter. The f***ing tells you what your heart oh, rate wow. is so wow. i constantly monitor my heart rate because my heart rate is usually really high but i actually feel cozy with you guys so it'll probably be 85 no that's true. Awesome. Not, high, but not, not bad. that bad yeah. not that bad it's usually like 110 115 have you ever thought um, of maybe just getting like an apple watch or a fitbit i you know I have, <laughs> i'm actually wearing a ring called an aura ring and as you can see and i'm not working this? for them they should pay me for this but um it has little sensors in it oh can you guys oh, wow, see that yeah. wow. so this monitors me all day wow so this like and it's stylish it's stylish it's actually it comes in gold and rose gold and so what happens silver. if you start like freaking out if I start freaking out, this thing will alert me and go, like, your heart rate's way too high. Like, you need to start doing some deep breathing, calm down. So, wow. like, my f my first thing I do is deep breathing. Um, then I do some CBD, which I have. I use um, this stuff called TeraVita CBD, which is, like, my. I always talk about it on my page because I want people to know, like, how awesome CBD is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is... CBD that has ashwagandha root in it, oh, I, I've done which that makes you really calm, yeah. and it has full spectrum CBD. And it, literally, I just drop this under my tongue, and within 15 minutes, my heart rate will go down. But if I'm in a really gnarly panic attack where my adrenaline is just going, then I have um, I can either take a Valium, which I hate because mm -hmm. you know benzos are really addictive. Then mm -hmm. I have this stuff called. Crataegus oxy can't and you see I carry it all with me because God you, forbid, you never right? Know. You yeah. never yeah. know what's gonna happen, right? I get triggered telling my ghost story, I gotta drink this. Um 
So this is, you guys are like, why did we have this <laughs> psycho voodoo witch lady on our podcast pulling out all kinds of weird, I'm like, this is the Crataegus Opsy Cancer. She starts making I start making, I'm like, do you, have a, in the Gucci purse. do you have a cauldron? <laughs> <laughs> I start, start making you guys drink it. I just need one drop of blood from each of you. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all oh I need. Um, so yeah, so this is called Crataegus Oxycantha, which is, uh, this is amazing. And I think this should be more readily available to people. It slows your heart rate down naturally and not dangerously. Mm -hmm. You can take 50 drops of this. I take 10 and my heart rate will go down. So I prefer all this stuff over benzos because you know what happens with Valium and Xanax and stuff. And not, not to shame anyone that takes it, obviously, because they're very helpful. But what happens is, is your body gets used to yeah. that. And so when you panic, your body's like, okay, we want that. Mm. And so like you start taking that and then you get in a cycle of like comfort and then you start taking it like every day and then, mm -hmm. you know, then you're stuck. And then when you try to stop taking it, your anxiety is 10 times what it was when you started. So a yeah. lot of people are stuck. And so I try to use the natural stuff because I don't want to get on a benzo, you know, yeah, I don't want to get on a benzo. Yeah, circle. I've heard that, I've heard people that have like really bad anxiety. They just like go for a run or like go. You always you do the opposite. You try to like calm yourself. Well, down. I do. I do. Um, there's so many different things yeah. you can do. I mean, you can bite if you're in the middle of a panic attack. You can bite a lemon, and it actually distracts your brain because your brain can't like process you having this panic attack and the taste of the lemon. Really? So you can bite a lemon. You can get. I have like a silver bowl at my house. So I can fill with ice water. And you just dunk your head in for five seconds, take it out, dunk it back in. You just keep dunking your he face in ice water and your heart rate will slow down. Um, so those are all like natural things going for a run. Some people like, because of me, my heart rate goes up so high that if I started running, it would go up even higher. Uh, yeah. But for some people, when they start walking around mm -hmm. and getting that nervous energy out or going for a walk or going out in cold air, that helps them, yeah. you know? So it's just, it really depends yeah. on who you are. So you um, said you said you have, like you fear like traveling and stuff. So I fear tra I feel I fear planes. Like I'm like, oh, my plane's gonna be the one that crashes. Like right. it's gonna be that. Like I see the headlines in my yeah. head, and you know, I read a story once about Megan Fox where she was like talking about how she was afraid of flying, and so like her trick was that she would play. Um, hit me baby one more time <laughs> while she was in the air and she's like yeah there's no way that I'm gonna crash with this song playing you know what I mean <laughs> like that would just be so lame yeah. so she's like that's how she calmed herself down like wow. as they were landing she would play hit me baby <laughs> like I don't know it was weird and that kind <laughs> hey, of it too. works for her yeah so that is all the time that we have on the podcast Brittany thank you so much for being on here do you have any other questions yeah no I was just gonna say thank you for like Getting the courage to come out here yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, means a lot. It. Like, Thanks for having yeah. me. I really appreciate of course. you guys. Of course, and Brittany has her own podcast called First Worst. Worst First. Worst First. Close. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> We're yeah. actually going to be on her podcast, so go and check that out. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to tell to the people out there? No, just uh, be good. Be good. Be good to yourself. Be good. Take care of yourself, yes. everybody. And uh, until next time, <laughs> we'll see you guys then. Thanks for listening to Sus. Share your scare. Make sure to subscribe and check back every Wednesday for new episodes. And don't forget to tell your friends. Follow all of our social media links at shareyourscare.com. We're going to be doing tons of giveaways, but only for our most active fans. If you have a scare of your own that you want to share, leave us a voicemail. Our number is 626-275-8695. Or if you just want to shoot us an email, our email is shareyourscarepod at gmail.com. And that's spelled with a U-R. Until next Wednesday, stay sus. <laughs>